What's up guys, back again with another video. This episode we're going to be going over how to use uh, two methods that come with your threads inside of Java. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, before we start, we have actually, uh, you know, the two methods. It's called, uh, one is called it is alive, and that will just tell you if the, it will return a boolean value that tells you if the thread is still running or not, okay? And, or like if it's suspended or not, basically. So if it says, if you run is alive, and it comes back with true, that means the thread that you run it on, you ran it on is uh, alive. If it's false, obviously it's not running anymore. And then we have the join method, which is a little more complicated, but basically it's just a method that tells other methods not to run until that method is, until that thread is finished. Until, yeah, yeah. so it tells other threads not to run until that thread is finished, basically. It's a little confusing, but we'll get right into it and we'll see how, to, how it works. So let's go ahead and create a new class for the method here. So class, Let's, name, let's just name it Bayer because I'm sick of typing my thread. Um, implements runnable. That's how we'll do ours. And then um, let's go ahead and get the public void run in here. Uh, let me get rid of that because it's annoying. Okay, so inside of here, we're not going to do the countdown thing anymore, but we're going to do an output here. And then we'll say potato. And then uh, we'll have a try here, a try statement. And this will sleep thread dot sleep for about one second sounds good then we got to catch that interrupted exception and if you don't know what's exce what exception it's asking for here just um, hover over that it'll tell you which one interrupts that exception and you got to have a parameter of course that's how e there we go so what that is going to do is say potato and then wait one second and it's going to say uh, frog okay oh frog there we go so just some random and you, I'll uh, show you why I put this stuff right here. It's really doesn't matter what the what it says inside. Of course, it's just I'm about to demonstrate the importance of this. So anyway, um, so we have that, and then we need a uh, we need some stuff here. So string name, and then uh, thread t, and then we're gonna have our uh, what's it called uh, constructor. So inside the constructor, we'll have actually a parameter like last time. So string name, so this dot name equals name, great. And then we'll have um, thread, thread, uh, what's it called? Oh, no, 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 we already have that. So t equals new uh, thread. And then inside of that, we'll have this and then name. There we go. Looks good to me. So we're creating a new thread, of course. And yeah, so that's what that does. Pretty simple, right? So it looks all good. So we're going to go ahead and test this out by creating two threads here. So thread, um, yeah, thread, thread one equals new thread. And then we'll have our, we got to have a parameter, which is the name of the thread. We'll call it thread one. Okay, looks good to me. And then we'll have thread, thread two equals new thread. And we'll call this one thread two. Looks good to me. Okay, so let's run this and just make sure there's no errors before we go ahead and call the start method. Oh yeah, okay, so good, no errors. And um, so we're gonna go ahead and call the start method, like I said, t, oops, t dot start, wait, what? Oh, I see what I did wrong. I uh, made the objects in the type, in the class thread, not the class bear. So my mistake, sorry about that. So we're just gonna go ahead and change this from thread to bear, and then bear. So basically, it didn't work because t is not a variable that exists inside of bear, of course. So you know, it didn't make sense. So t dot start. So there we go. That makes more sense, right? Uh, t dot start. Great. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this, and it should do what we set it to do. So that means that these two pieces of code for each thread are gonna run concurrently. So potato, potato, frog, frog. So perfect, right? So what that does, you know, obviously it's going to run these two threads uh, at the same time, and it does. So let's see what happens if we output um, this here. Let's do thread. Oh no, we got to output it, right? So sout, and we can do thread one dot is alive. Okay. What? Oh, right. We got the thread one dot t dot is alive because that's directly uh, referencing the thread. Okay, and then so 
T is alive. There we go. So that will just uh, print out if the threads are alive, of course. And it says true, true, potato, potato, frog, frog. And um, the confusing thing is for me kind of too, is that it actually prints out before all of this. And uh, for some reason, the order can be a little different sometimes whenever you're running stuff like this. I don't know exactly why I did that, but um, I'm sure maybe you could figure it out maybe later, maybe if you do some research or something, but it's not really that important. The point is that um, it's all running together, so that's why it does it like that pretty much. So, um, so anyway, it's saying true, true, and that just means that the thread is still running while I ran this piece of code, right? So let's go ahead and say we move it here in front where like um, we didn't even run it yet. What the hell? Okay. So we put it here before we even start the thread and that should return false. There we go. False, false, potato, potato, frog, frog. Good. So basically that little method here just returns, um, you know, if it's alive or not, basically, if it's running. So pretty simple, right? And so we have another method here, which is kind of a little more complicated that I talked about. It just, um, whenever you run it, basically it's saying, wait until this thread is done, the one that you ran it on, and then run the next piece of code or next thread, okay? So it actually has to be enclosed inside of a try statement because it also uh, throws the uh, interrupted exception thingy right here. So basically like that. So the code inside of here will be thread one, dot t dot join oops wrong one so it's called join and then we got to catch the exception of course oh my there you go so what this will do is normally you know these these would run at the same time right so actually let's get rid of this real quick and we'll see what happens since we got rid of the is alive thingy so obviously these are going to run at the same time. So potato, potato, frog, frog, like that. Okay. So if we add this in the middle of it, it's going to say, don't run this one until this one is done running. Okay. That's exactly what it's saying. So it's going to do potato frog and then potato frog again, because it has to finish running the first thread before it starts running the second thread, which does potato frog also, you know? So it's, it might be a little confusing at first, but just play around with it and, you know, and, um, so let's try something else. Let's make a third thread here. So bear thread three equals new bear thread three start. Okay. So that basically will, well, let's, let's just see what happens. Okay. Hopefully you know what's going to happen, but it's okay if you don't. So potato frog and then potato, potato, frog, frog. So if we look closely, it's saying um, start the first thread, but don't run these two or the next threads until this one is done. That's what join is for. So these will join this one, I guess you could say, but not until this one is done running. So these will run concurrently, but this one won't because this one has to finish because we're using the join method here. So, you know, that's it. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. If you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll help you. Or we have a Discord that's in the, in the description that you can join and you can talk to us, if ask questions, anything you want to do. And so, yeah, if you want to see more videos, just subscribe. And we have a big giant playlist. We're almost going to get to 50 videos in this Java series. So go ahead and check it out if you want to. You can do many things. It's all in the description. Um, so if you liked it, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more, and peace.